So hello and welcome back to the channel. It's been such a long time since I've done a video and I say that much the same as I did in my last video but it has been such a long time. I think a lot of people are wondering if I was actually still doing this channel. Um, obviously for those that are aware I've been having a very long standing um, shoulder injury that seems to have just been prolonged and it really just has gone on and on. Um, but returning back, having had um, some treatment on my shoulder and just been working out in the gym, trying to get um, the strength back in the shoulder and listening a lot to my physio really um, as to what I really need to do to progress. Um, I think until you start actually looking at shoulder injuries within the sim racing community, um, it is quite a big problem um, that a lot of people are struggling with Obviously, we've got our wheels that generate quite a lot of force and you, you wouldn't imagine driving for an hour or so is a problem, but with the amount of pressure that goes through the shoulder girdle itself, um, especially through wheel locking, um, there is quite a lot of force going through there. And I have, I will link an article that I read um, within the video, I'll probably put it up on screen. Um, but it was um it was trying to emphasize how much you could reduce the strain through this section of the shoulder by bringing the wheel closer so you will notice i have put a few images on the screen as well um the modifications that i've made to my rig in order to bring the wheel a little bit further towards myself I didn't really want to adjust where the screen is or where the pedals are because I'm so used to those. I think bringing the screen closer to me would have probably felt a little bit weird as well. Um, I, I do feel like I sit close enough to the screen as it is, so bringing that even closer would probably start doing damage to your eyes, I don't know. But I, I just wanted to change the distance from the wheel to my hands. and my arms do actually hit the seat and I can touch the wheel itself whereas before I'd say it was probably maybe 10 centimeters further away so I was really that was the kind of difference between my arms and where the wheel is now positioned obviously I can bring the steer the seat a little bit more upright if needed but I'm just trying to reduce the amount of um leverage really i've got with my shoulders um and obviously limiting a little bit of the time that i spend at the rig as well so just currently doing trying to do maybe an hour every other day on the rig to try and build up some strength back in the shoulder um, but just an issue that has been plaguing me for a long time and hence the reason why i've spent quite a bit away uh, time away from sim racing i, I just couldn't maintain um, the level of commitment that I wanted to put into the game. Um, we are coming back, we're going to do a setup here at Brands Hatch in the Audi. And I think there's been a lot happening with the game since I've been away. Obviously, um, if we just come into launching this session, and you'll see I'm running um, the skill level 99% uh, and 92% aggression. I feel this is a good level to aim for if you are if you don't particularly enjoy running online races and or you've never run an online race and you're wondering, am I gonna be competitive enough? I think this sort of level of skill and aggression from the AI is a good ballpark, uh, ballpark to know whether you're gonna be competitive against some really good drivers as well, so. This is this this is the setup that I tend to use uh, when I'm doing setups, and as you can see there yesterday running in that session a 24.5. It wasn't the best in the session. I think a 24 from the AI was at the top. Um, so, but I just ran an hour in the car uh, just to try and get things uh, moving again and just to get myself back into um, being in the rig. It's been over a month since I sat in the in the rig itself and did any driving so obviously there is going to be a level of um, getting used to the new wheel position and just coming back to the game and getting used to it again <clears throat> obviously looking in the top right hand corner there we've got version 1.7 13.0 um, 
I know there is a lot going on behind the scenes to get this game into the version 1.8 um, that we're all waiting for uh, but in all fairness coming back to the game it does feel really good um, the force feedback through the wheel still feels really nice as far as I'm concerned I'll just I'll show you the control settings that I'm using um, we've got pedal functionality the wheels turning as it should do um, you can see the settings that I'm using there and the effects um, I'm using a club sport wheelbase with the GT3 McLaren wheel um, I'll quickly run through the setup that I've got obviously I'm running automatic on my wheel my force feedback is also set on automatic drift mode I've got set to minus one F E F F int is set to 10 which is like the effects through the wheel the brake pressure or the brake level is um, something that you're going to probably set yourself but I've got mine set to 60 my MPS is set to automatic and my brake force is set to 3 which again is something that you're going to set yourself when you set your wheel up I have recalibrated my wheel with quite a lot of pressure through my pedals um, to generate what I would imagine is like a GT3 brake um, so let's come into the audio again as well something that I feel is um, can be detrimental to how you sort of hear what the car's doing um, so have a look over those there um, video fidelity and everything tone mapping um, again that's going to probably be something that you're going to look at yourself um, general these are the settings I've got ratings are generally just like these on um, multiplayer only um, because they do they do cause and when you're racing against the AI they can be quite unpredictable um, all these other things are like off automatic start on the engine or um, I don't like that seeing the line on the circuit either and these are the other settings I've got in there <clears throat> I don't like seeing the, the the driver names above the cars it just takes away that real re a reality type feeling yes so let's get into doing this setup um, like I was saying also there's a there's been a lot of talk about the game where it's heading um, a set of course a competition yeah a set of course two coming out uh, maybe 2023 20, 24 something like that we've got um, the additional add-on I think I get the I forget the name of the guy Maserato or Maserati or something it's not Maserati but Masamuto the, the the founder of Assetto Corsa Competizione <coughs> uh, coming out with um, discussion about GT2 cars being um, added to the game obviously we, we just don't know when that's going to happen I think he blurted it out during a press conference um, so that isn't actually set in stone yet whether it even comes is another thing altogether but there's definitely talk to develop the game uh, further I'll just load this setup where we were yesterday and the game crashed well that wasn't um, expected so my capture will have stopped um, so I'll just be let's just launch that again obviously there's an issue there then so straight in it was something that I was finding um, was a problem when I last came to the game was trying to um, trying to choose a setup that I created the game did keep crashing at that stage um, so yeah that was uh, that was a good one there is still issues with the game so let's try that all again just make sure we are capturing again and um, I'll just do single player multiplayer single player multiplayer single player um, just so that I can re um, resync the, the game so let's start that again but yeah where we, where we go with Assetto Corsa 2 um, I would love to see um, all the mods that are in the PC version coming to um, next gen consoles it would be amazing um, let's see if we can load this setup in again let's just come straight back 
I don't know what happened there. <clears throat> I tend to find you have to come out of the garage, let's just launch into driving light, light. and then go. come back to the garage again. There is definitely issues with the game. So let's just come back to the uh, let's let's do a lap and then we can um, can I can put that into a replay and we can watch a little bit of footage while I'm just chatting away. But yeah, there was um, a lot of talk about Assetto Corsa 2. Obviously, we've got Forza Motorsport that gave us their little demo the other day. Not sure c quite whether it's going to be any good Forza Motorsport obviously only time will tell I'm assuming that will release sort of closer to Christmas I'm kind of hoping we get version 1.8 sort of September time it is a great circuit Brands Hatch and I'm definitely looking forward to the uh, American circuits, Indianapolis, um, where else was there? I can't even remember the name of the circuits that came out, especially not while I'm driving. <laughs> Watkins Glen, that was one of them. But I, I definitely think a set of course of competition just as it just brings a real realism to the to the circuits. It really does. Every time I play on it, um, a new circuit on Car this game, right. it sometimes right. feels like the first time I'm ever driving it. Um, Obviously, I've never driven on them in real life before, but um, when you've come from Project Cars 2 um, and you drive the same circuit in a set of course of competition, it just doesn't feel like the same circuit at all. You've got all the bumps, obviously, there's all the ray tracing that they're on about bringing to Forza Motorsport, whether that's going to feel better, but I, I think Assetto Corsa Competizione does a fantastic job at recreating all these circuits. It really does. So I'm just checking that the tyre pressures are going to be sort of in that ballpark. Obviously we've got the AI well done, mate. Your fastest step so far. causing us issues at the minute. It's definitely these slower corners where you lose so much time. Circuits like Brands Hatch. You think it's the faster sections that you're slowing, but it's generally the slow sections. Such an important corner that one as well, because obviously you're going to carry all that speed down here. Just overextended on my gears there. Breaking early, picking up this inside curb. Does feel good to get back in the rig. Just got a little bit of understeer on corner entry at the minute with the car. Just a corner I really do struggle with is turn one. Just picking out your braking point. Thank you. 
you can see there's there's definitely issues with the car at the minute just that turning really it's uh, just not probably said it's not responsive enough Let's see if we can get this first corner a bit better totally wiping out those cones Yeah, touching the kerb just doesn't help. And we're kind of getting a little bit wayward on this front tyre. Let's just soften that out a bit. I do like to see 27.8, um, but the temperature through the tyres as well is getting quite high through those front tyres. Might be an idea just to open out this front. You see we're getting up to like 97 at the front. 97 at the rear as well but it is good to see that they have actually swapped these around we were getting the wrong readings on the tires so you see the 97 94 91 at the rear left is actually the right way around it was the wrong way around at some point but we'll just come back and um let's watch a little bit of this replay but yeah there was a lot of talk about um um, I will put a little link as well, probably a little video somewhere in there of all the cars, the GT2 cars that they were talking about coming to the game, possibly 2023, 24 I think. Um, obviously we are very far behind on the development of the game when it comes to console and obviously there's untold games that are doing a lot behind the scene. You can still see that it is a little bit jumpy here and there even running on the next gen consoles obviously there's a lot of people still talking about um, the standard Xbox and the PS4 it is no longer going to be developed on the old console um, there's no further development at all so even people looking at the M4 the other day um, it's just not going to be coming to the old console so it's definitely a time in the sim racing community I think if you're going to continue to enjoy the games um, to move to the next console it really is I don't think Forza Motorsport will come to a standard Xbox um, it will be in next gen only uh, you just can't create the level of detail that we want anymore on these lower powered machines um, especially in simulators uh, but as you can see it is I think it still does look a little bit jumpy in places although we are running at 60 frames it does say 120 on my monitor but it certainly I don't think it is anywhere near 120 frames <clears throat> as much as it does fluctuate on screen from like 120 to 90 and stuff through the menus I think as soon as you start playing the game it's running at 60 and that's it um, but it's good to be get, getting back behind the wheel um, there is a lot of um, activity on the Facebook page so do do come along and um, participate in the Facebook group there is always people posting uh, new leagues and stuff like that so if you're interested in finding like like-minded like drivers and you're not looking at ruining your statistics uh, in open lobbies all the time please do pop along there's people posting stuff on there and discord links all the time um, so yeah let's get back into this setup what we came for um, and let's see if we can make a few changes and get this car performing I still don't think I've put in a perfect lap just yet um, but as you can see there 24 is what we're aiming for and it just feels like the front of the car <clears throat> as much as the rear of the car isn't particularly gripping too well Let's just add a touch more camber at the rear for some cornering 
um, stability and I have adjusted the toe already to try and get it um, just turning a little bit eagerly into the corners traction control running at four um, we're not running too let's add a little bit more um, fuel to the car <clears throat> brake balance I could adjust this a tiny bit and you can see why we're probably we could maybe just soften out the front of the car a little bit to try and get it turning in more um, I have made a few tiny adjustments there and we could maybe even just lift the rear of the car to get it more um, compliant but I have already made quite a few changes to this setup it is particularly trying to get that lap nailed which a lot of the time that is the only issue so we've got absolutely no sound pulling out of the pit no engine sound at all we've definitely got sound there nope still no engine sound these are really good things aren't they having just come just come back to the game let's go to the replay again let's um see if we can get in car So definitely getting engine sounds there. <coughs> Let's return back to the garage. Let's go to the MFD. So that's cutting the engine. So we've got engine start. Maybe I just not. There we go. So there we go. We've got engine again. That was all very. Um, f a few issues s just in the video. So yeah, we're just scrubbing a little bit of front end grip through a lot of these corners. I think the car is rotating enough. Too wide. You're always on a good luck when you've run a tiny bit wide. Twenty three, one twenty three. That's the lap time we want to be aiming at. Absolutely no grip there at all. Miles off.
Come on now. Obviously, the tire is getting very hot. Just sliding around at the rear. Well done, mate. That's the best. And then just lots of sliding around there. So I tell you, temperature's not that bad either. It's very hard to do anything else with that tire temperature. But the rear, I think, was getting a bit scrabbly. And obviously, when you start adjusting these brake, um, the brake ducts. Obviously, you start changing the PSI and the tyres and everything. So I have to increase that a little bit. Let's just save that setup where it is. And just finish this with one couple of flying laps try and get somewhere near I don't think I could hold fourth and then obviously try not to cut too much of that corner touch the barrier might as well start again oh that's the thing with the GT3 wheel very hard to know whether it's the right way around or not sometimes so we're going to get one flying lap here which probably isn't good enough to warm the tyres So I never really managed um, to get the lap I was hoping for, 123. Um, but still, it's been a while since I've done a setup. Just can't find the sweet spot with this car here. Um, just a little bit too much understeer, especially through the braking phase. And I think as soon as I start adjusting that with the brake balance, it just becomes a nightmare to drive. Um, you're always trying to be more consistent like I said it's consistency that corner there really is the biggest issue um, with the setup it's just trying to find the grip through that corner to be able to take it almost I won't say flat out but carry carry speed through there with confidence getting the braking 
um, right for turn one again that's just something that will take time to master and all these things take time to master they really do just being smooth with the break through that corner just the release of the pedal as you come through there clipping that apex but not taking too much curb to unsettle the car again here just coming down through the gears third then second and just trying to hook up that inside curb get as much traction off the corner as you can and then coming down to this um, last section here just breaking two shifts down with the gears and then you almost want to be back on the power straight away just out of this apex breaking at that last board on the left hand side cutting the corner as much as you dare on the inside and being on the power as quickly as you can for the exit and then it's this blind right hander really where all the time you can make so much time in this last section carrying speed through there but it's having the confidence in the car but yeah and again this just the last corner even as you come up and over the rise of the cut the curb the cut the circuit do, really does undulate at the front of the car understeers the, the, the traction just dips away and everything it really is a fantastic circuit but getting the car dialed in and just practicing this circuit to get into them 123s or even the low 124s it's got to be a good ballpark to aim for um, especially on console obviously these pc drivers are just in a different game altogether so don't look at their lap times really it's still nowhere near the same game but until the next video which i've got no idea when it will be um thanks for watching thanks for sticking with the channel i just thought i'd film uh, the extra end piece just to go through that setup right at the very end um just making that tiny adjustment to the traction control play around with the abs as well um just have a look at the tire delta there see it is wearing much better on the inside of the tires i'm glad they've sorted that um so just looking at the setup there thanks for watching ciao for now